please give us the invitation. Join me as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Um, as we pause before we attempt to do the people's business, we want to thank you for being a wonderful creator, for uh, creating a, a wonderful place to live like Lee County, for uh, helping us to get here among the, the people that live here. We want to thank you for our county employees. We want to pray for the safety of our sheriff's deputies and our firemen and our EMTs and all the people that work to keep us safe. Uh, we want to pray for the citizens that live here that, uh, that, that you would bring us jobs and you would help us to do the things that we can do to make their lives better. And we pray for ourselves that you would give us discernment and wisdom as we attempt to do the right thing. We pray all this in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
I'm not going to go over it in great detail. I don't want, if you all have any questions, please stop me and ask. I'm mostly going to go on over the major changes between what you have now and between what you saw several months ago and what we have come up with now. Um, the first thing is that, well, I guess I need to start with the last thing first. But I'm going through it chronologically, but this first point is in relation to the last point. One of the most controversial issues of this ordinance has been the amortization of non-conforming signs. Once, once this ordinance is adopted the way the previous version was written was so all signs that were not built according to the standards of this ordinance would have to be removed within a period of three years. Um, we, the planning staff and the regional commission, looked at signs within the county to get an idea of what the scope of that would be. How many signs are we talking about that would have to come up in three years? And it wasn't a really big problem. Uh, we felt like it, if it was a widespread problem, then there's clearly an issue. It still would be up to you all whether you want to do, go that route or not. But if there's only three or four of them, it, it, we didn't want to push this if there were only a handful of signs. And after going out and measuring signs and looking at the standards, there really were only a few that were um, did not meet most of the language of this new sign ordinance. So we have pretty much revised the amortization part of that. There is still there are still two issues, which I'll talk about in a minute. But so on, on page three of the copy that I'm looking at, we have um, explicitly put in that all signs that all signs that exist currently have been uh, are really grandfathered into this ordinance, with the exception of a few that we'll talk about in a little bit. So it has a page three. I think it's eleven in our book. Well, it's section seventy six point two. That's page 11. I'll go by section number, that'll be easier for you. Um, so that, that clearly grandfathers in all existing signs. Um, so that, that part of the ordinance is out where all the non-conforming signs would have to uh, conform within three years. The next major change between um, this ordinance and... Did, that, did I hear you give a number as to how many there were? I, I did, but I was I was guessing. I don't remember exactly, but there were only three or four that were really too big um, to meet the standards of this new ordinance. And we didn't feel like fighting for three or four was worth it when there are some other issues that we'll talk about that, that are bigger issues, but putting that in when it's controversial anyway, and it only affects three or four, and it was only minorly. I think one of the numbers was maybe a sign could only be 100 square feet. One of the offenders, if you will, was 110 square feet. So it wasn't massively larger than it was to be permitted, just a little bit. And you know, we don't have to fight the fight, you guys have to fight the fight. We didn't think that the three or four signs, it was worth it. Um, okay, one, one of the next issues is billboards. Well, first let me say that in the development of this ordinance, we met with several different groups, and we got great input from all of them. We met with design companies, and Mostly that was the billboard companies, and they, they gave us the information that we used to put in this regulated billboards. They, they gave us what they would be willing to live with, and we thought it was even maybe more strict than we were going to put in. Um, we, we met with business owners, and business owners gave us some good input, and we also met with the public several times because we've had a few public hearings, and all three of those groups, but especially the public, have given us a lot to uh, to think about and to change in this ordinance. Now, the billboard issue, I want to make it clear that the way this is written now is it does not allow any new billboards in Lee County. Uh, this, you know, it doesn't regulate Leesburg. All the existing billboards are fine, and they can be replaced, but no new billboards are allowed. That can be changed. That, that's a number that you all can put in if you want to. The, the standards that are in here, there are spacing standards in between billboards and residential areas and billboards and themselves. So if you were to go with, with these spacing standards, which I think are, I, and I'm on section 7644, right? Um, billboards have to be at least 1,000 feet from any residential district and have to be 2,000 feet from any existing billboard. If you, if you take those standards and take the maximum number of billboards, I think it's only five new ones that could be built 
in the county with those spacing standards. So we put in zero because we've been largely guided by the comprehensive plan and um, the, the vision of the county as, as we know it, that it wants to remain agricultural and, um, and a bedroom type community. So we didn't feel that billboards really are the character of Lee County. Billboards suit the character of an interstate a lot more than they do a major uh, arterial road like 19 um, or even 82. So our number is zero, but if you go with the spacing standards that we have, the most you really could have is five. So unless you change, if you want more billboards, we can change the ordinance in that fashion, but the spacing standards we have now would allow a maximum of five. We have it at zero, you can opt to go up to five or change the standards completely and go even more. But that's a number I want to point out. As it is, it's zero. Um, illumination <coughs> of signs. Signs are not allowed to be illuminated in residential, residentially zoned districts. So signs in residential areas are lit signs are not allowed. And there's an issue in this <coughs> illumination section, 7645, that I want to bring up. Um, we put in signs that not be allowed to change, changing signs more than once every 20 seconds. That's, that's an arbitrary number, um, but we, we felt that Changeable signs, which we'll talk about more in a second, um, shouldn't change that often to be a nuisance because they can't be a traffic hazard. So changing once every 20 seconds is, is slow enough that they're not a traffic hazard. 10 seconds could be argued that that's probably slow enough as well. And that's another number that is, is up to you all. We have a recommendation of 20, but I, I would say anything over 10 is fine. Um, again, that, that's a flexible number, but just want to point that number out to you if it comes back. Um, there was an issue that, that was pointed out by the public and the planning commission that, and the sign companies that they, sign companies don't want signs that are, the ordinance previously required signs to be lit from the top, shining downwards, <coughs> and not from the bottom, shining upwards. Sign companies prefer that they shine upwards because I think the bulbs are easier to change. They don't have to get a bucket truck, they can do it with a So. We didn't see it as being any huge deal. There's language in the ordinance that prevents uh, the glare from being a nuisance to motorists or neighboring properties. So we changed it so signs can be lit in any fashion, up or down, as long as they do not uh, create an hazard. Okay, the changing signs are technically called multiple message signs. These are signs um, like the new billboard at Publix, but multiple message signs apply to billboards, or smaller signs that it's a, that they have multiple messages on them. Let me pop. Yes. So a multi-message sign is the billboard on the public side of the road, the one south just past Publix. But it's also the CVS sign. That's right. The new one. Uh, the new CVS sign. Right. Yes. Yes. It's either those, but there are multiple message billboards and there's multiple message signs, which includes. The the billboards are regulated differently, but they're both the same type of sign. And the messages. only one that's limited in number is multi-message billboards. No, both of them are limited in number. The way the ordinance is written, um, multiple message billboards, to put a new multiple message billboard up, it needs to replace two and a half billboards, or two, five sign faces. So two billboards is each side of a billboard. So 0.5, the, the question one. So the new public sign, or the new one in front of the public, is half a sign, so 0.5. But to put up a new multiple message billboard, you have to replace 2.5 existing billboards. So that would give you 2.5 less signs and one new multiple message billboard. And I think with the total number of billboards in the county, if all of them were, were replaced, I think it would provide for about four new multiple message billboards, and that would eliminate all the rest of the billboards. 